Savior, who is Jesus the Christ, and from the powerful Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The text which serves as the word for our meditation on this occasion is uh, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, and includes the parable of the sower. Let me read some selected verses for our meditation uh, this afternoon. And again, Jesus began to teach by the lake, so large that he got into a boat, uh, the crowd was, and he sat out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching he said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Thus far, our text. Let us pray. <coughs> Savior, may your voice be heard this day till our eyes behold your glory. Give us ears to hear your word. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you this day, Pastor Tim, Marion, dear congregation, brothers. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters throughout Lutheran Church Canada who together this day rejoice in what God has done here in providing for you an answer to your prayer that the Lord would supply, yes, a pastor uh, to you to fill the office of holy ministry that God himself has established among you to deliver his good gifts to you. Today is a great day, but it's primarily a day not about us, or about you, Pastor Tim. Today is primarily a day about the Lord of the Church, 
the one who called your pastor, who formed your pastor, who now has set his, sap, his pastor in your very midst and has authorized him to speak and to work among you. So today I want to focus our attention on the one who calls and empowers your pastor to serve you. So we have this parable uh, using agricultural imagery. It's interesting that this happens by the sea. And I'm thinking, wow, we're pretty close to being beside the sea here. <laughs> and uh, perhaps we have the right kinds of varieties of soil. We have rock that I went by, I'm sure. There's a lot of rock underneath the soil, and there's some good soil, obviously, because, I mean, I walked by, and there were beautiful crocuses popping up through the, uh, through the brown grass and uh, the lights, so there's obviously some good soil there. And I'm sure I saw some people tilling their, their gardens and getting them all ready for planting as well. So there's all sorts of soil here. We can relate to what... Jesus is teaching us in this parable. The first thing we note is that it, the, the sower is Jesus. And we see how in love he is with sowing seed. That is the word of God. He and his earthly ministry went through villages and cities, planting his gospel of the kingdom healing all sorts of diseases and afflictions, which within our Lenten uh, readings we heard about last week about the blind man, and today healing even death, right? Bringing Lazarus back from the dead. The Lord loves to go sowing his seed of life and salvation. And the Lord absolutely loves to send out men to do exactly what he himself does. He told his 12 disciples, proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. And he gave his disciples this promise. The one who hears you, hears me. Today is all about Jesus and by extension his labor and his harvest. You see, Jesus still absolutely loves going throughout all the world, including here in Campbell River, to proclaim the kingdom, heal our diseases and afflictions, and he does it through the men whom he calls to be his pastors and sends them out to proclaim his word. Dear saints, you've been praying to the Lord for a long time now that a, a labor would be provided for you from God himself. And here's the man. He's answered your prayers, right? One day there, there were a few children who got into a discussion about their dads. And one proclaimed to the other that his dad was so great that he could leap tall buildings. And another, not to be outdone, said, well, my dad is so strong he can stop a runaway freight train. And still another said, yeah, well, my dad is so great he can outrun a speeding bullet. And finally, the littlest one among them said, my dad, well, my dad takes out the garbage. I hate to break it to you, Pastor Tim is no super, ver uh, no, no version of a superman. No, he is a pastor, and he brings no impressive qualities with him either, or special abilities to fix whatever is ailing you as an individual or as a congregation. He brings nothing special with him to grow your congregation, add more butts to the pews. It doesn't look like there's too many more to go here today. Increase your financial stability, but yes, perhaps you can take out the garbage. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, your, your pastor, he's a fellow sinner. He's a man who has the same kinds of faults and foibles, 
sins and stumblings, trials and temptations as you. But you also have a man who's been redeemed, forgiven, covered, and strengthened by the blood of Jesus. You have a man who's been washed clean in baptism. You have a man who must confess his sins and live only on the word of Jesus' proclamation of forgiveness, of holy absolution. You have a man whose faith is shored up and strengthened by the body and blood of Jesus and his holy supper. And so, dear saints, your task, given by Jesus himself here today, is to receive, to love, and to listen to this man, this laborer of the Lord, this sower of seed, which is the word of God in your midst. He is the man whom the Lord of the church has called through you to serve you his holy word, to administer to you his holy sacraments, to teach his word of truth and life, to admonish you when you stray, to shepherd you when, when you wander from the faith, and so that you might receive all the good things of God to strengthen and preserve you now and unto eternity. Pastor Tim, you've only just begun your work here. You know a little bit, perhaps, about where the Lord has placed you. You know a few of the roads and what to avoid and where to go. As you begin your service, as the Lord's under-shepherd, his watchdog with one eye on the Lord and the other on his people. I don't know these people very well, I have to admit. But one thing I do know is that these are not perfect Christians. This is not a perfect congregation. You're not living in a perfect community. Or in fact, there is no perfect congregation. There are no perfect Christians this side of eternity. And there are no perfect communities in which to labor. No, the soil you are planting seed into is different than the soil of your past location and service out east. It is a soil that has been infected, yes, with COVID and with all that the pandemic has brought. And there's still much recovery to be had. It is soil with large, uh, large patches of pluralism, with many sorts of people, with many sorts of values, and many sorts of gods. This is a soil here that thrives on ambiguity and paradox. You will be sowing into soil that has been depleted of the gospel. You'll be sowing into rocky soil and weedy soil and such things which make up this community and which also influence the congregation and her members. And while the soil may be different here, your labor remains the same. Plant the seed. Proclaim, teach, confess the word of God. Plant the good seed of God's holy word. For the Lord has said, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And that sower here at this time is you, Pastor Tim. And there may be times when a few or many or, or uh, a lot of individuals here may not endure sound teaching. There may be times when some or a few or an individual here or there will give in to their temptations to scratch their itching ears and turn to their own passions. But Pastor Tim, I want to remind you, these are still God's people. They are still covered over and forgiven by the blood of Jesus. They are still his baptized saints, still fed and nourished on his body and blood. And so St. Paul's words to his younger charge, Pastor Timothy, are perfect words for you too. Preach the word, 
Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Your task, Pastor Tim, given by Jesus himself here today, is to receive these, your people. Love them. Give them Jesus. In all your preaching, in all your teaching, in all your visitations with and among them. Your task is to pray for them and with them. Your task as a, as a sheepdog is to shepherd them, keeping one eye on the Lord and one eye on the flock whom he has entrusted to you, using the only tools that Jesus has given you, his word and his holy sacraments. Luther had a simple list concerning the pastoral vocation. In his treatise to, on councils and churches in 1538, he writes, we must have bishops, ministers, and preachers who publicly offer these four means of salvation, the sermon, baptism, the Lord's Supper, the office of the keys. But if you would really push Luther, he would say that the vocation of the pastor is servant of the word. In the first course that he taught on the Psalms, he affirmed that the gospel which he identified with Christ or with the biblical message or with the proclamation of, of Christian preaching was the most important possession of the church. He called it the royal scepter by which Christ rules his church and his kingdom. And by the end of his ministry, he spoke of Christ as the chief priest preacher and of his pastors as instruments and tongues. It is what our risen Lord Jesus also sent Peter to do. Remember how Peter had denied Jesus three times before Jesus went to the cross. And after Jesus had risen, he both absolved Peter and gave him a new mission in life, spoken three times. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Your task given by Jesus himself right here and now today is to know nothing else except Jesus Christ and him crucified. The Lord's labors works for the Lord's harvest. You will notice in scriptures how Jesus calls the harvest his. It's not the pastor's harvest. It's not the Christian's harvest. It's not even the church's harvest. The harvest belongs to the Lord. Remember how St. Paul said it, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ who provides the harvest in such abundance that he says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers you. So it is that a sower goes forth. And that sower here in this place is you, Pastor Tim. You are God's sower. His labor sent to this, the Lord's harvest field, sent to proclaim God's word, the labor for his end time harvest, doing the things that he himself did and still does. Bethany Lutheran Church, your prayers have been answered to provide you with the labor of the Lord's own choosing, to be your shepherd of the Good Shepherd, to work with you, listen to him. Amid all the joys of this day, amid all the celebrating and rejoicing and giving thanks, still remember this, today is really all about Jesus, showing his compassion to you, shepherding his flock, 
working his own harvest among you. Thanks be to God for his bountiful grace, for his unending mercy in sending us Jesus our Lord, to whom be the eternal glory and honor, now and for eternity. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, to the church's usual order, the Reverend Alex Tim has been called by the Lord of the Church to be pastor of Bethany Lutheran Church. You may be seated. Pastor Tim, hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the institution of the office of holy ministry. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Pastor Tim, hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the responsibilities of the office of Holy Ministry. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Jesus said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Further, do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given to you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the, of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them. 
and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of poor Christ. God made his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We implore you about Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made himself to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of the season. Reprove, revoke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having each year they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off in the midst. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of evangelists, fulfill the term ministry. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Our Lord gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you. Not, shame, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not dominating over those in your charge, but being an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Pastor Tim, hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and the promise God gives to those will hold the office of holy ministry. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. Continue in these things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart, so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in all of your labors. 
God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel, and thereby also grants it growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this might be done, he has established the office of holy ministry, into which you have been called by the church, and have been ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. And so it is fitting that you should again acknowledge the responsibilities of the holy office in which you are to serve as pastor at this congregation of Bethany Lutheran Church in Campbell River, BC. In the presence of this congregation and before our Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. And do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a, a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small part called Articles, the Treatise on the Power and Primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith. Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. And you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with the Holy Scripture and with these confessions. Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel. Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will, with the help of God. And finally, will you honor and adore the office of the holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of holy scriptures and the confessions? Will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of his Holy Spirit. As we stand and turn to the of communication. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority, for they keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy and not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. Now you've heard the solemn promise of him called to be your pastor. I ask you now, will you receive him? Show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ. And will you support him by your gifts and pray for him always that in his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed. If so, then answer, we will, with the help of God. We will, with the help of God. Will you honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all 
God-pleasing responsibilities? Will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best construction on everything, recognizing that love covers a multitude of sins? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God, strengthen and assist you always. Pastor Tim, are you willing and ready to assume this public trust and responsibility? I am. Alex Tim, I install you as pastor of Bethany Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, he put you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Invite the congregation to Christ. Merciful God and Father, you have graciously promised that through the preaching of the crucified Christ, those who believe in him will be saved. By your Holy Spirit, grant grace to Alex, whom you have given to be pastor of this congregation. Grant him readiness and steadfastness in this ministry patience, understanding, and great zeal. Support and strengthen him in your service, that by your word your church may be built and increased through your Son, Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have established your church to be a temple and dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks that you continue to provide shepherds to feed and serve your flock in which the Holy Spirit has made them overseers. We humbly implore you ever to strengthen the labors of your ministers, that through their ministry of word and sacrament, your people may increase in your knowledge and service and grow up into him who is the head, even Jesus Christ to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory, now and forever. Amen. After him, the Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always.